Alright, welcome to the Stanley Parable. It's funny because I actually watched this game by another um, YouTuber. Um, not this one, but uh, the first one, Gassy Mexican. Really funny stuff. <laughs> really funny stuff, I gotta say. This game. This game makes you just think about what happens and, like, makes you think what you should do. I, I'm kind of like the pushover. I'll really do whatever the person says. This is the story of a man named Stanley. I think we already established that. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee Ooh, number geez. 427's job was simple. This guy make over his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a wow. keyboard. <laughs> Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every Give me some good music and I can do that forever. As though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Hey, I think most people would prefer that over most and jobs. One day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Hey, where's my mouse pad? Okay, well then. Alright, welcome back. Um, I just wanted to make sure this was recording properly and make sure my new recording mic is working. workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed God a damn. This game got a complete makeover. Wow, I did not know that, like... Watching the first game, the narration was good. The storytelling was like... <laughs> oh, here we go. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Ah, uh, should I listen to him? Or should I be a rebel? Ah, uh, I like listening to him. Uh, but no. Oops. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. <laughs> Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. You know what, I'd like to drink some cold drinks. Yeah, I'll stop now and keep going. <laughs> I'm not but eager to get back to business. Stanley took the first open door on his left. What's in that next room? I'm sure I'm gonna figure out something. Really okay, well. Stanley was so bad at following directions. It's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Hey, I. Uh, hey, I listen to my boss, not you, sir. Whoa. Okay. Well then. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Ooh, her. Oh, man, there's a maiden. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. I highly doubt you're want Okay, well then. Is there another choice? Come on. I know from experience of watching this game that there's always a different choice. There's a choice that you don't have to listen to that guy. Which I don't... He sounds nice. And I really do want to listen to you, sir. But... I don't know. Ooh, geez, that room, um, a bit too dark. 
Whoa, wait a second. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. <laughs> I'm not going to pick it up because I have to do something real quick. Trying to find like a makeshift pencil pad. Or, um, freaking whatever uh, mouse pad. Because right now I'm missing my mouse pad. There we go. This paper will do. Hey, I know phones do not ring this long. Um, well, I can't leave, definitely. I can maybe unplug it. Yes! The phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug it? <laughs> yes, I did! No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? I did it! Chose incorrectly. I chose correctly, sir. Let me double check. I'm writing my own script. Definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he I'm finds a rebel. his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. <laughs> That's correct to me. None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> ha! I yes, I am. I believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Oh no. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. Oh, it's what? the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. <laughs> he, he looks like a bob. Years, helping improve the quality of life for citizens what? of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer <laughs> radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner <laughs> and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. What? <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> I'm not... Excellent. Well, okay. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? What? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant. Oh, well, and the thanks. the feeling should subside. Oh, well, At this look. time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. I'm gonna go sit ah, What? Back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Alrighty then. <laughs> well then. Um. Okay. What, does it think I'm gonna jump off and die? Now that we know your 
choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Oh my god, really? Character dying senselessly halfway through the story. God damn it, I wanted to die. Make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. I'm not stupid, I'm not gonna jump. Well, now that you point it out, I really want to now. <laughs> You're the one who tempted me. Not me. Oh, look, a chair. Maybe I can step on the chair and jump. No, nope, I can't. Alright, well then. Let's continue on. I hear doors shutting. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. I'm already in the world. I could pause this game and go outside and smell the fresh air if I wanted to. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Screw you, I am Stanley, and I'm going on the right. No! Why did you do that? <laughs> Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Because I'm Stanley, and I want to go this direction. Hey, I should be able to open that door. Wow, the rule's kind of falling apart, isn't it? Okay, I don't want to go. Okay, fine. I'll go that way. <sighs> Jeez. Oh, jeez. That's a... Uh, well... Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we've talked <laughs> about that you... My story. You've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What, what do, do I do? No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Well then. Well, no, wait. No! No! I must outrun this whore. Ah, oh, goddammit, I couldn't run it. Um, can you turn back on the game? Please? Um, Mr. Narrator? I I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you run it into the ground. <laughs> hey, well done. Did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? It's pretty hilarious. I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley. He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. <laughs> that thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? No, it had. The world outside of you. No, I had. Child. No, I did. I just didn't want to listen to you. My story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Excuse me? Um. Just behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Um. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he now I'm entered the door on his left. Now I'm afraid to go through the right. I'm afraid. Well then. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. Uh. Is behaving. What? Um. Did I break it? Um. Did it freeze? No, it didn't freeze. 
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> what? You're, not, you're just not gonna let me see? Um. Well, I'm. Um, Mr. Narrator, you've kind of turned off my. No. Why did you do that? What? I don't know. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Um, I don't know what happened before. Did the narrator just turn off my field of vision? Or, I, I, okay, I'm just going to try one more time to the right. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. That's well, behave exactly as all right. All right, that's it. Um, that means choosing responsibility. All right, all right. I'll go this way. Putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the time. I'm sure I've Just broken the game enough. And you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. What the heck? Okay, well they're teaching how to freaking be the worst employee in the world. Apparently. Coming to a staircase, God Stanley it. walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hey, in the last game, there's an option going downstairs. You just totally not even gave me the option. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up. But now, he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Did I? <clears throat> I don't know, I'm not really speaking so much. Narrator, I can't... <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Um, Narrator, I think you forgot... An Night Shark 115? I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? No, I Please can't speak! Speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. If this is a crucial step, you should have thought about it because I can't speak to you. Okay, fine. You're not gonna do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. I can't do it! Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. Um. When Stanley came to a set of two... What the hell? Stanley, don't do it! Go to the right! Stanley? Hello? You... <laughs> yes! Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. What? I need you to walk through the door. I what? You Can you hear me? Is everything alright? Oh my god! Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without it's, you. No, no, this is not the end for me. This is not the end for me. I'm gonna find a way. I'll 
accept whatever you do. I simply it's gotta be something. That step forward, please. Gotta be something. This game makes you do something. Come on, there must be a way. This is more important than you could ever know. I need this. The story needs it. Come on, let me through. So, you hear me? Are you wow, really? You can't jump, really? Thank you for that achievement. I. God damn it! Let me. Th I no, I don't want it to end. Is this it? Really? I'm waiting till the absolute end. Stanley looks a bit weird. Okay, well then. Okay, um. What? What? Um. Okay. I guess that's. <sighs> okay. I'm just gonna take a breather. Alright, got this.